Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord in his presence once again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to go ahead on and we're going to prepare our hearts today to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever ever living, everlasting word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so right now, let us prepare and let us pray. Let us pray and let us believe God right now for his best. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this great opportunity that you've given us. Oh God, as we humble ourselves before your mighty hand, we choose, Father, right now to acknowledge you as our Lord and our Savior. You are the true image of God established in the heart of man. Father, help us to see ourselves as you see us. And help us to walk in that knowledge. Help us to see ourselves walking in that knowledge and, and, and experiencing the power of the kingdom of God working in and through us. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. And now, Father, I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive, make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we covenant with you now that we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in the glorious and mighty, majestic name of Jesus. And all that agree with that saying, amen. Glory to God and amen. Well, glory to God. God bless you all. Welcome to a new life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. Thank God for each and every one of you, and thank God for you that are joining us by the internet. Amen. I got, I you know, I, I met, I got, I came back in a contact. Well, they contact me. Amen. From some friends that I had known for I don't know how many years. Amen. I knew their father. I knew the whole family. I used to go to their house all the time and over there, and uh. But they contacted me last night. They said, are you that same guy, that same Larry that my dad used to visit? And I said, well, yes, I am, because I remember very well. He was my buddy. He was my friend. Amen. Yes, but anyway, thank God for those, that, that family, they, that they still around. They still remember who I am. Amen. And uh, we're going to continue to walk in the knowledge of who he is in us. Amen. And uh, praise God. Amen. So I want you to... We've been, we've been dealing with the message on Sunday mornings right here since uh, uh, December. Uh, restoring the image of God in the heart, back into the heart of man. Today we're going we're gonna, to uh, still talk about the same thing, but we, we, have, we have a different word for today. Amen. The word we have for today is uh, Jesus Christ is the true image of God. Jesus Christ is the true image of God in in us, in you, amen, in you, amen. So as we come to understand this, as we come to walk in this knowledge, we will come to experience the goodness of the Lord like never before. Because I'm telling you, folks, we are in a, we are in a season of, of grace right now. We are in a season of grace. God's grace, God's ability, God's word working in us, amen. And I just want to, I, w I just want to, uh, uh, to just uh, acknowledge that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And so I want to, I want to thank God for every everyone that is, that is uh, here today, and those that are still coming, and those that are watching by the internet. Amen. We are here in this place. To acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. How y'all doing today? Good. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Jesus Christ, the true image of God in us. Amen. In us. And this is this is going this is going to help us to understand 
the message that I've been teaching throughout the, the year already is the restoring the image of God back into the heart of man. Now we're talking about Jesus Christ, the true image of God in us. Jesus Christ, the true image of God in us. Amen. And we got, we got, uh, we're going to see what Paul was saying about that. We're going to see, we're going, we're going to look at some scriptures. Amen. Because we need to see that what God is saying to us is still relevant, relevant today. Because you see, we need to know and understand that we are the image of God. Christ is the image of God in us. Amen. That's why it's so important that we renew our mind. Amen. That we renew our mind because when we renew our mind, it brings out that image. It helps us to see that image that God placed in man. Amen. But if you don't renew your mind with the word of God, then you're going to walk around with that same old image that you uh, was born into this earth with. Amen. And God wants you to begin to experience the new image, which is renewed in the knowledge of the image of him that created you. Amen. And that's through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're going to be talking about some of that today, and, and uh, I believe that it's going to it's going to, it's going to be a, it's going to minister to your heart. Amen. Amen. Did y'all have a was it Sunday morning? Was a powerful service. Amen. Oh yeah, it was, wasn't it? Amen. Powerful service. Amen. And I believe that uh, that God spoke some prophetic words during that time. Amen. That literally uh, went into the spirit realm over our lives and going to bring forth. Uh, an increase going to bring forth an increase so Jesus is the true image of God amen hallelujah I'm going to sing y'all a song this morning amen is this alright <laughs> I'm going to sing you a song this morning amen and then we're going to go right into our lesson amen go ahead and get one ready back there and let me know what it is don't amen glory to God because I feel like I want to sing a song. Hallelujah. I feel like God is going to visit us today. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is going to visit us today. What is it, honey? Because you live. I did that one another day. Give me another one. Amen. Because we want to do what God wants us to do, but we want to do it. Yeah. Is that? Okay. Yeah. Amen. Sweet anointed. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Right side the side that the tape is on. There you go. If it ain't right, you can always straighten it up. Just put it in there and let's play. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting something together up here, so just maintain. Just hold yeah, it. There was a strong anointing last week in here. Yes. So, yes. Good song. Is that our song? Yeah, that would be a good song. The anointing? Yeah, continue. Uh, Which one? Oh, uh, the one that she just mentioned, I thought. Oh, the sweet anointing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet anointing. So there, that was here last week. That was here. Let, 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 let it continue what you yeah. said. Oh, I got you. Praise the Lord. Exactly. Amen. <laughs> let it continue. Amen. Amen. So you got it on? Got the bite? Um, uh, are you sure? <laughs> oh, God. Well, it depends on which way to turn to. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, while she's getting that together, I just want to encourage you that uh, we're getting ready to go another fast. How many want to go on a fast with us? Amen. We're getting ready to go on another fast because we're about, we're about to prepare for this, uh, this uh, Holy Ghost healing revival, healing conference. Amen. And uh, we're gonna go on fast. We're gonna, I was telling my wife. I said, I said, look, I lost some weight on that. Let's see. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. No, honey. You was on the right side at first. I thought it was, but I know I'm going to keep everything ready to go. Amen. So just uh, reach. Sorry, God. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. We're learning every day. Amen. We are learning every day. And so uh, the last healing revival we had was a very successful one. We had many people touched and healed by the power of God. Amen. And we're getting ready to do another one. And we want to uh, just encourage you all to uh, to prepare your hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Is it ready now? Okay. Glory to God. Let's go and let it roll. Hallelujah. Sweet anointing. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We worship you. We praise you, O oh God. you in right now. 
we look to you with confidence and we lean upon you. We depend upon you to lead us in the guidance of all truth and to show us things to come. Holy Spirit, come, make your boat with us today. And Father, we thank you. Fill this place with your sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. We worship you. We praise you, Father. We acknowledge you today. Oh, yes. You are here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for visiting us. Oh, listen, at, look at the atmosphere starting to change already. Hallelujah. He's here. scripture today with uh, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 15, Colossians chapter 1 verse number 15, amen, Colossians chapter 1 is right after the book of uh, Philippians, Philippians. You're right after the book of Philippians. Amen. Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse number 15. Hallelujah. And it says, who is the image? Notice what it said. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. All things were created by him and for him. Ha hallelujah. Amen. So we're talking about the image, the very image of God is Christ Jesus. Amen. And that's why it's so important that we begin to read. Let's turn to Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. Romans 12, verse number 1. Amen. Because you see, once, this is where it all started. 
This is where it all starts. When you renew your mind with the Word of God, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring you back to your first love. Amen. Because the Word of God will bring you to a place of acknowledgement. The Word of God will bring you to a place of, of, of understanding. The Word of God will bring you to a place where you can hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you as an individual. Amen. So we have to uh, come in the Word. Come and get in the Word because the Word of God is God Himself. Amen. And His dwelling is in you as a born-again child of God. His dwelling is in you. So now as we, as we understand this, as we can see this, we notice what it said in verse number 1. It said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. This is Roman 12, verse number 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. <laughs> Amen. And then it said, and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. See, your, the image that God created you to walk in is not the image that the world wants you want to see in you. The world wants to see an image in you that's going to that's going to cause you to be less than what God created you to be. Amen. God created you to to rule and to reign in this earth. God created you a little a little lower than the angels. Did you know that? He created you just a little lower than the angels. Amen. And God looked at you as someone that is valuable. Not a worm crawling on the ground. Amen. God looked at you as a, as a, as a, as a, when he looked at you, he sees his own self. When he see, when he looked at you, he see himself. Amen. Because he placed within you his image. Amen. He placed within you his image. Now notice what he says right here in verse number two. He said, and, not, and, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. God created you to, to walk up and down in this earth, walking and having dominion over the, over the fowls of the air, the fish of the sea, and over everything he created on this earth. That's the way God created you. That's what God intended for you to, to walk in. Amen. That's where he intended for you to walk in. So now as we look at this, as we can see what God is doing right here, we can see here, we can see here that he says in, in, uh, uh, Col in Colossians chapter 1, in Colossians chapter 1, amen, verse number 15, it says, I'm going to go back there again. I'm going to, Colossians chapter 1, amen. Now notice what he said, but let's, let's back it up a little bit though. Let's back it up a little bit this time. Let's back a little bit this time. Look at verse number, verse number, verse number twelve. Hallelujah. Start at verse number twelve. It said, "Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us meet." Notice what it said, "Made us meet," or, or, or you might say, "Made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from." The power of darkness, now knows what he said, and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. If we've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son, <clears throat> then I believe we've been translated into the image of his dear son. The same image that was in Jesus should be living on the inside of us. Amen. Notice what verse number 14 said. In whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Amen. Why? He said, why did he say, even uh, th uh, the, the redemption of, through the blood and the forgiveness of sin? Because he knows the, 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 the sin is the thing, is the element that's going to keep you from displaying uh, the image that God had placed within you. Sin will stop the image of God from being seen in you. Amen. And so this is why we must uh, look at Christ because you see, Christ came into this earth and took upon himself the form of a servant and in the likeness of, of, of man. Amen? 
Now who can set a perfect example of the image of God in man? But Christ. He is the perfect image of God in man. And we are to aspire to be as he is. Am I right? So as we as we as we come to understand this, then we can see what he's saying right here in verse number 14. In, in, in whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sin. The, 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 the sin is the, is the element that stops us from uh, displaying or uh, allowing the image of God to be seen in us. Verse number 15. Who is the image? Notice what he said. Who is the image of the invisible God? Of the invisible God. Hallelujah. The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible. What's going on back there? Is it too high or too low? It said it's um, too high. A God. Okay. Don't enter there. Praise the Lord. The very first one, all the way over. Turn it down just a little bit. All the way across. Number one. Thank you. Right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let me get back in the floor. <laughs> oh my God. Hallelujah. Amen. So now let's go back to the uh, 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 back into Colossians chapter 2, verse number 15, verse number 14 again. In whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sin which is the element that keeps us from allowing the image of God to be seen in us. Amen. Who in the image of God, who is, who is, no, no, who is the invisible image of God, the firstborn of every brethren, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and in earth, that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominion, or principalities or power. Amen. All things were created by him and for him, and he is and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. In him all things consist. So that means we consist in him. Amen. His image in us is the image that God intends for the world to see in the house of God, in the church of God, in the people of God. Amen. That image is an invisible image, but yet that image can be seen in you. Why? Because God is in you. Because God is in you. Look at, look at the 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Hallelujah. Amen. And it reads, In whom, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believed not, See, there are so many people that that are that are that are having difficulties in following the things that God has given them because they they have allowed their minds to be blinded by the image of the of the of the of this world, Amen. The image of this world, because the image of this world is has nothing to do with with you focusing on the things of God. It has everything to do with you focusing on the things which are around you. The things which are seen, the things which you can touch and feel, the, synth, the the physical world, amen. When God wants you to understand that the spiritual world is a whole lot more advanced than what you see here, because this is a we're living in a parallel world, amen. If you can see yourself walking in the spirit, then you can see yourself rising above the circumstances of this life, amen. Because God is going to bring you to a place in Him that you've never walked. That's why the image of God is so important, folks, that the world see the image of God in us. Because if they don't see the image of God in us, then they don't see no way out of their situation. 
They don't see no way out of that situation if they cannot see the, the image of God in us. Amen. The church. We are the church. Amen. Amen. In other words, we are the ones that should be displaying the image of God. So it's saying in, 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 a, in, a, a, in a Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Now notice what it, notice what it says right here. Who is the image of God? who is the image of God, should shine unto them. See, you are the, Im the image of God is in you. And when you, and as you are walking in this earth, people are going to look at you and that, that image that's in you is going to shine. That image that's in you is going to shine. My wife was telling me uh, last night that uh, they, they just opened up another office over in West Sac. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and all these uh, dignitary people was in there uh, to help to, to get things set in order so they could open up the, the business. And uh, they were all just sitting around their mind, you know, just talking and everything. And by the time she walked in the room, she said, all of those dignitary people that was in the room, they all stood up. And they, and they started to say, how you doing? Amen. Well, she started introducing themselves. And they said when the owners came in, the, the dictator people just sat down and do nothing. <laughs> what happened? They saw the light. They saw the image of God come in the room. Yes. Amen. Amen. Can y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. So, and, and when the and when the owners came into the room, the people just sat down and act like nothing was going on. But when she walked in there, she because she she she's in this she's under this teaching and this anointing and this and, and she understands what I'm saying about this image. And so when she walked in, she she understands who she is. Amen. So she walked in, the image of God is all over her, the glory and the light of God shining all about her. And that's what the people saw when she walked in the room. They saw the image of God. Amen. And they stood up and acknowledged it. Amen. <clears throat> And that's what's going to happen as you stay, I'm caught because I'm telling you, this message that I've been sharing, it is working on me. <laughs> and I'm not lying about it. It is working on me. Amen. It's working on my personality. It's working on my mind, my will, my emotions. It's working on me. And I believe that might be why God had me teaching this message. <laughs> so I could get worked on if it worked on me, it's right. It's going to work on others. If it changed me, it's going to change you. Amen. And that's why I encourage you. Amen. Ever since God told me to teach this message, ever since God gave me this message uh, in December, he gave it to me for, for the year of 2019. Amen. Now, along with this message, there's going to come a display of God's glory. Oh, shout out loud by cold. Woo, glory to God. My God, that was the Holy Ghost. There's going to come a display of God's glory. Amen. Rest upon each and every one of you. Amen. And you're going to begin to, you're going to begin to experience, I mean, uh, change in your, in your everyday communication, in your everyday life. Amen. Things that have been, uh, things that have been, that you've been struggling with, all of a sudden they're going to be, it's not going to be a struggle. And the things that you trying to get rid of, you're going to be able to get rid of. But then that's going to be some, that's going to be some times when you're going to have to draw back and just humble yourself and just pray and seek his face yeah. because nothing is going to come easy. Amen. Everything that God is getting ready to do in your lives, you're going to have to be willing to sacrifice a little of your time. Amen. And it's going to be in prayer. Amen. A little in prayer. Amen. God is getting ready to do something in your lives. I see God's glory begin to rest upon you. I see the strength of God begin to rise up within you. And I see the powers of darkness begin to flee from you. Amen. When you walk into a room, that you're going to be acknowledged. And you and, and, and they're going to think, who is this, the president of the company? No. It's just little old me. <laughs> Amen. But God is going to do something, and I want you to be ready because when God begins to do it, you're going to see the hand of God like you've never seen before.
Amen. You're going to see the hand of God like you've never seen before. Amen. So it says in so it says in, 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 in 2 Corinthians, amen, in 2 Corinthians, amen, you see, notice what he says here, glory to God, in, 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 their, in their case, God, was, God, the God of this world had blinded the minds of, of the unbelievers. See, their, their minds have been blinded, amen, they can't see the light, but when you are walking in the light, then when you come in their presence, you are going to be the only light that a lot of them see. Amen. And you got to understand that. You're going to be the light that, all of, uh, that a lot of people can only see. Amen. Notice what he said in, 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 uh, in verse number four again. In whom, we, in whom the God of this world has blinded the mind of them which believe not. Because there's a lot of unbelievers out there. Amen. Amen. And their minds have been blinded because of their unbelief. Their minds have been blinded because of their unbelief. Amen. So, so the only light they're going to see is, is the church of God. The people of God walking in the light. And so it says right here, that blind the mind of them that, that, that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image, you see, when that light is, when that light is, is shining in you, when that light is, is, is visible in you, they are actually seeing the image of God in you. Amen. You think that they are, are seeing you, but no. They're looking beyond you. They're looking at the image of God that's in you. Amen. Because the darkness has blinded their eyes to everything else. But when you come in their presence as the child of God, and you've been walking in the presence of God, that what's going to get their attention is the light of God. The light of the glorious gospel, which is the image of God in you. Amen. Now that's what the scripture said. That, that's not what I that's what God said. Amen. Because he said the glory, the image of the, the, the who is the image of the of God should shine unto them. Amen. So he's talking about you. He's talking about you. Amen. And so now we see here. We see here that we are we are, we, are, we we see things here we see things here coming to a full circle, amen. We see things coming to a full circle, amen. Notice what I'm notice what I'm saying here, because you see, God made man in His own image. Let's look over in Genesis chapter one. Let's, let's, let me just let me just take you right there, real quick. We all we all know it, but let's go to it anyway, amen. Genesis chapter one. Verse number 26 through 28, what we're going to read right now. Amen. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Now notice what he says here. Male and female created he them. Now, why did God, why did God create men in His image? Because God wanted someone in the earth, just like someone, just like He was in the heavens. He wanted someone in the earth dominating, just like He was dominating the heavens. And He made someone a little bit lower than the angels, so that He could plant them in the earth, so that they could rule. And reign over all of his creation in the earth. You see, Adam and Eve were just like gods. They was little lower than the angels, and they wasn't. They, they was not God, but they were like God. Y'all need to understand that, Amen. So God want to restore that same image. He wants us to see ourselves a little higher than the demons, because you are higher than the demons. The demons walk in darkness, <coughs> but you walk in light. You walk in the very image of who God is. That's right. And this is what God wants us to see. Because God has given us dominion over all that he created. Notice what it said? In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Amen. Male and female created he them. Now notice what he says right here in verse number 28. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And subdue it. Subdue it. 
In other words, take dominion. Take dominion over all that I created. God created us to take dominion over all he's created. If we're not walking in the image of God, there's no way we can take dominion over God's creation. Because we don't have the ability to in our own strength, in our own character, in our own nature. Therefore, we have to put off this old man. We have to put on a new man, which is renewed after the knowledge and the image of him that created us, who called us, what? Out of darkness into his marvelous light. So that image that God created man to walk in is the image of dominating. You have the ability to dominate. And that's why sometimes these women want to dominate over these men. <laughs> and some of these men want to dominate over these women. It's vice versa. Everybody won't want it their way. <laughs> it's my way or no way at all. Remember that, Oka? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So we have to learn to we have to learn to, to do what? We have to learn to abide in the spirit. Why? Abiding in the spirit. Because in the spirit, there's, there's peace. There's harmony. Amen. That's understanding. Glory to God. So notice what he said right verse number 28 again. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion. Notice what he said. And have dominion, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every earth bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in the, in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is like I have given every green herb bear, every green herb for meat and is and it was so. Amen. So God said, God said, and it was so. So what God done? God has given us dominion. God has given us control. Amen. God has given us control. Amen. So now I want to take you somewhere else. Amen. I'm going to take you somewhere else. Because you see, what I just read to you in Genesis chapter 1, I want to take you to Psalms 8. Psalms 8. In the book of Psalms 8. Amen. Let's kind of back up what I just read to you. In Psalms 8. There we go. That's 28. I want 8. There we go. <clears throat> Psalms 8. Now notice what it says right in Psalms 8. Look at verse number 4. When I considered the heaven, the heavens, the work of my fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou hast made him that what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited him? Notice what he said, verse number four. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Note, now, now this is this is the word of God. This is not me making this up. This is the word of God. He said, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and had crown him with glory. Remember I said while I go by the Spirit of God, the glory of God is about to come upon you like you had never experienced before. Now we see it right here in the Word. Amen. Amen. Had crown. Amen. Verse number 5 again. For thou had been made a little lower than the angels and, and had crowned him with glory and honor. And made him to have, notice it, dominion. 
There go that word dominion. What did we see that at a while ago? We saw it in the book of Genesis. Amen. We saw it in the book of Genesis. Amen. See, God has given us everything that we need. We just got to understand what he has given us, and we got to learn how to accept it and walk in it. How to accept it and walk in it. Amen. So verse number verse number six, and had made us and, and had and had, and made it him to be and thou made it him to have dominion over the work of thine hands thou had put all things under his feet you see everything that God created he given us dominion over and he's placed it under our feet amen all sheep and oxen yea and the beast of the field so everything that God created God has already given us don't mean it over. The only thing is that we don't, we never been aware of that. Because we never saw ourselves the way God sees us. We never have seen ourselves walking in the image that God created us to walk in. Amen. We've always seen ourselves being living a, a, a below our privileges because this is the picture that the world wanted us to see of ourselves. He wanted to see us barely getting along. And believe me, what you envision yourself to be, that what that's what lifestyle that you took on. Amen. But God wants us to see ourselves not just barely getting along. God wants to see ourselves every need met. He wants to see ourselves walking in the, as the head and not the tail. He wants to see us walking above and not beneath, blessed and not cursed. Amen. This is the way God wants to see want us to see ourselves. Notice what he said, verse number, verse number seven. All sheep and oxen and and all and beasts of the field. The fowls of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever parrot uh, pass it through the through the path of the, of the sea, O Lord our God, how excellent how excellent is Thy name in all the earth. So we see that God had given us everything that we need, but until we come into the knowledge of what what it is, we will never be able to experience what God has given us. Amen. He had put all things under our feet. That's why God has said, Behold, in, Acts, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power over all the powers of the enemy. He said, Why? Why are he telling us that? Because he had put our, all things under our feet. Even that enemy that, that, that has been so disturbing, amen, that is so deceitful, that enemy, is, it only has power over you if you allow it to. Just like last night, well, yesterday it started. <clears throat> I started sneezing. I started coughing. And I started hacking. And I, I said, whoa, what is this coming from? I have not violated the natural laws. I kept my coat on me while I was out in the cold weather. I have not violated the spiritual laws. I have not did anything, Father, that would, that, that have breathed your Holy Spirit. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, devil, you have no right to touch me whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke those germs. I rebuke it right now, and I command you to get off of me. You have no right to touch me. I rebuke you. I resist you. Now go from me right now in Jesus' name. What am I doing? I'm taking dominion over my body because God has given me dominion over all that he created. Amen? And he created me. You have dominion over your body. How do you do that? God created you, and you, once you start understanding that God's image is in you, you can speak not only to your body, but you can say to the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and if you don't doubt it in your heart, that mountain will have to be removed. Amen? That mountain has to be removed. Why? Because you're not speaking in your own strength. You're not acting in your own, on your own ability. You are acting on the word of God. Now remember, the word of God was here in the very beginning. John chapter 1, verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. And verse 14, and the Word was made flesh. So the Word of, the word of God in us causes that image of God to, be, to become powerful. Whoo, glory to God. <laughs> Devil, you better watch out. These people get this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. When you understand what God has placed within you, you will not allow that devil to torment you anymore. Amen. 
You will not allow the devil to torment you anymore. Thus he applied the oh, Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Am I, are are y'all getting there today? I tell you what, I am. Chapter 15. Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And look at verse number 24. And we're going to read a few of these scriptures here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hello. Dear friends, okay. glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. Thank God. Hallelujah. In First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Verse number 14, and it read, no, excuse me, verse number 24, verse number 24, then coming to then coming the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rules and all authority and power. See, God. Oh my shit came out of my. Let me read verse number 27, verse number 25 first. For for he must reign till the until, for he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. How many of you know that God He's empowering men and women to see themselves as he is, so that every enemy can be put on the foot of man. God, that make me go. That that, that put another. That put another scripture in my spirit. Amen. My God, can I take you? Be, hold your finger right here. I'm gonna put my little screen right here, so I can come right back here. But I want to take you to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter 1. Then I'm going to come right back here. I just got to back up what I just said. And I got to back it up with the scripture. I can't back it up what I think. I have to back it up with the word of God. Amen. So in verse number 21. Verse number 21. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 21. And it said, Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion, in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and had put all things under his feet. There it is. Did the Holy Spirit just drop that in my spirit? Why? Because he wants to keep everything line upon line, precept upon precept. If you stay with the word, the word will bear out the, the, the its own meaning. We don't have to put our uh, meaning to what God is trying to say, to what God is saying to us. We can let the word interpret itself to our heart. Amen. So notice what he said right here. And they put all things under his feet. Amen. Verse number 21, and they put, of course, shit came out of a guy. Mm. For far above all principalities and power the mighty and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and have put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Notice what he said, which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit did not work in the church of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and other mind, and were by nature church of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for, with, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together. Notice what he said, and quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are you saved, and had raised us, notice what he said, verse number 6, chapter five, chapter 2, verse number 6, and had raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
So we are seated together in Christ Jesus. That's why God does not want us to be conformed to this world. Because to be conformed to this world, we will be outside of Christ Jesus. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But to, be, but to be in Christ Jesus, we must be conformed to the image of God. Because the image of God is Christ Jesus himself. He is the true image of God. And when we allow his image to penetrate our hearts through the word, we take on that image. We take on that authority. We take on that divine strength that only comes through him. There, by adding dominion over every power of the enemy that you would ever fight, that you ever come against. God has given you the power over all the powers of the enemy, and he said that nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so now, as we continue in this, we can see here in, in the book of Matthew, amen, in the book of Matthew, glory to God, in the book of, see, as, a, as, as unlimited fulfillment, amen, God, God's image in us is going to bring us into a, a realm of dominion over all that God created. Amen? It's going to bring us into a realm of dominion over all that God had created. Let me look at uh, 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 quote, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. And then I'm going to go back to the other one. <laughs> I guess I'll go back to it when the Holy Spirit let me go back to it. To tell you the truth, because I'm 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 in the I'm in the whole I'm in the flow of the Holy Ghost right now, Amen. In Matthew 28, and look at verse number. Glory to God. Verse number. Look at verse number. Look at verse number 18. Verse number 18. Look at look at verse number 18. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. And Jesus came and spoke and and spake unto unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Notice what God gave us dominion. God gave us dominion over all of his creation. That means that you can speak the word of God and the Bible said, and shall not doubt in your heart. Mark chapter 11, verse number 23 and shall not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say it. And then Mark chapter 11, verse number 24 said, what things will ye desire when you pray, is that believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. You shall have them. Amen. So God wants us to not only take dominion over everything that he has created, but he wants to walk in the authority of who we are as sons of God. Displaying the image of God in the earth today. You are the express image of Jesus Christ when you are walking in the spirit of the word of God. Are y'all getting this? You play a great role in this end time soul winning campaign. That's why we must allow the image of God to resurface in the earth like never before. The earth is groaning and in travel and waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God and the daughters of God. We are the one that the earth is waiting on. Are y'all getting this today? He For I say unto my children, today, if you will harden not your heart and heed my words, I will empower you to be the witness that I created you to be from the foundation of the world. And yes, you will have purpose, you will have reason, and you will have a will to carry out that which I have placed within you. And yes, I will not allow my word that I give you to speak to fall to the ground, but my word that you shall speak shall accomplish that which pleases me, and I will see to it, said the Lord. Nah. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. 
Mm, mm. Woo! My God, that was holy. That was the Holy Ghost, folks. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Amen. Now look at uh, uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 again. Verse 19 again, is said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. See, God commanded us to teach this. It's not something we're doing just because it, it sounds like a good message. God gave me this message at the end of the middle of December, and I've been preaching this message ever since December. Amen. Why? Because God is not only dealing with my heart about, about the image of God to be seen in the earth, God is also dealing with your heart because God wants you to allow the image that he has placed within man through salvation to be resurfaced because we have allowed ourselves to be, you know when you, when you got a, 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 a lamp and you, and you have a candle and you, you, and you put it under the shade, you put that, that little cover over it, and if that slut, if that set get on the, the glass frame, it dims the light in the room. Mm -hmm. That's what the enemy has done to you. He has caused you to be dim so that your light cannot shine bright. God wants to clean up your glass around you. He wants to clean up your, 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 your glass around you. Amen. He wants you to, he wants you to be seen. He wants you to be seen. He wants the world to see you. Not just as a person, but as a child of the Most High God. Verse number, verse number, 20, verse number 20 says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. He said, I'm with you always. So there's no need to allow the enemy to intimidate you. No need to be afraid because he said, I'm with you always, even until the ends of the earth and the end of the world. Amen. 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 So God is showing us that when we follow his instructions, that we will see his glory. Amen. Now let's go. Now I want to take you one back, take you back now. Paul also connected the image of God with Jesus' uh, uh, dominion. In, uh, look, 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 let's go back to Colossians chapter 1 one more time. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 through 20. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 through 20. We're going we're gonna to get this today. Amen. We're going to get this today. Amen. And you're going to you be glad you did. You're going to be glad you did. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 15 through 20. Glory to God. And it reads one more time. We've read it twice already, maybe almost three times already. But you know what? When you when you try to get a point across, sometimes you have to read things more than once or twice. Because you see, you don't get it the first round. Sometimes you don't even get it the second round. Amen. So let's go ahead one more time. Verse number 15 said, Who is the who is the image of God? The invisible, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominion, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Notice what he said, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 17 now. And he is the and he is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of, who, now notice what he said, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the what? The preeminence, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of our through the blood of the cross, by him to re, to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be 
things in earth are things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now had he reconciled. So you may not even be living for God. You may not even, you may not even thought that God exists. But some by some miracle, God was able to get through to your heart. And you acknowledge, Jesus, I do believe that you are the Son of God. I do believe that you died for my sin. And because I believe that, I do invite you to come in my heart and be the Lord of my life. What happened? I just acknowledged the true image of God that God intended for man to experience, and now it is suddenly a part of me. How did that happen? I invited him in. When you invite him in, not only do you invite him in to display his image, but you invite him in to, so that you can see who you are in him. Amen. Jesus reigned in his earth as a king. Over the heaven and earth, which includes the church. So Jesus reigned over the church. We are the image of God in Him. God has given us dominion. How do we exercise that dominion? It's totally between you and your understanding of the Word. God will honor his word if you will stand on his word. He's not going to force any of us to do it. But he has made it possible that we all can do it. Not one of us have any less ability to stand on God's word than, than the other. It doesn't matter how much you know or how little you know. What matters is are you willing to sacrifice a little of your time? Amen. Are you willing to sacrifice a little of your time? Now notice here, look at first, uh, 2 Timothy. Amen. 2 Timothy. Because you see, the scriptures of God, <laughs> they... You, they not gonna, they're not going to be altered for, for you, for me, or no one. Where's, where are we at? Where are we at? Come on now. 2 Timothy. Here we go. 1 Timothy. 2 Timothy. And I want chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse number 11. There we go. And it says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 11. It is a faithful saying for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we, suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Mm -hmm. If we believe not, yet he abided Faithful. It doesn't matter how you think, what you think. God's word is going to stand. Amen. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. Look at Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Look at Revelation 20. And look at verse number, <clears throat> verse number 6. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death had no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. See, God is preparing you to reign. He's preparing you to dominate. He's preparing you to take dominion. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For those who, for those whom, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. Let's just, let's just, let me just take, let me just take. Go to Romans chapter eight. Romans eight. Romans eight. God, y'all just pulling everything out of me today. That's all good. It's all good. Romans 8. And look at verse number 29. And it says, For whom he for whom he did pre for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of of his son. He's talking about us here. To be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn of among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. There go that word glorified. Verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He had spread, he had spared not, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Freely give us all things. Mm. Oh God, I feel the power of God just starting to bear down upon me so heavy right now. Hallelujah. Because God is speaking to our hearts. He's speaking to our hearts. Hallelujah. Jesus was, Jesus, Jesus was the, he is the true image of God in man. He's the true image. Amen. Glory to God. Just as we have born, just as we have been, just as we were born the image of the of the man of the of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. You see, when you create it, you was created from what? The dust. You bore that image. But the moment you became a son of God through salvation, through acceptance of, of what Jesus Christ did at the cross and carried for you, you not only bear the image of the, the first man, which was from the dust, but now you bear the image of him that is from heaven. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Mm. <laughs> oh my goodness. I oh my God. This is how much time we got? Oh God, I'm over time. <laughs> I'm over time. <laughs> Oh God, I get so caught up sometimes I forget where I'm at. You know, I don't look. I, I used to have a clock back then. I took. I don't have a clock back then no more. You just put it. No, 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 no. I, I stop when the Holy Ghost tell me to stop, and and uh, he just and he just made me aware that that I'm giving you too much. You, I don't. I don't want to give you too much where you can't digest it. God, see, because there's always next Sunday morning. And I uh, and I'm telling you, this thing is getting better and better, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I know it is. It's getting better and better, amen. Because God has started revealing, and 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 the more I teach along this, the more he, the more it's been revealed, and the more they revealed, the more oh, the more I, the more uh, I feel His presence that's causing change. There's a change that is taking place in the spiritual realm 
is already happening in the spirit room over your lives. And as we begin to deal with your heart, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to cause you to experience change from within. And during the process of this change, you may be kind of a little or, uh, disoriented in, in some, some, in some, a little way. Not a whole lot, but in little ways. Little ways. And don't get frustrated at one another because of it. Because God is doing, God is working, God is bringing about an inner change that's going to affect your mind, your will, and your emotions. Amen. And as this change began to take place, oh, I can just see in the spiritual realm right now, I can see peace that's a passive all understanding it's starting to cover you. It's starting to cover you. Because you 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 hunger for this. You 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 you're reaching out for this. And God said, and God said, and God said right now, because you have not rejected what I am releasing, I will cause you to experience the peace of it. Mm. I can see the peace. Now the enemy is going to do everything he can to distort that peace. But don't allow it to happen. Remember, Jesus is the true image of God. And where is Jesus? He's in you. That's right. He's in you. So when things not going the way you think they ought to go, and the way it should go, look up and say, Father, I'm looking in now to the one that dwells me. Jesus, show me the way. Lead me and guide me. Holy Spirit, open my eyes that I may see the path that my Father had laid out for me. That I may not walk in error, but that I may walk in the truth of the word. Oh, hallelujah. And God is going to begin to reveal. God is going to begin to reveal. Hallelujah. Shh. Hallelujah. Y'all sense the presence of God starting to rest in this place right now? Hallelujah. I told you. Right now, if you need anything from God right now, release your faith for it right now. His presence is here. His presence is right there where you are by the end of it also. Whatever you believe in God for right now, as the Spirit of God is moving right now, release your faith and be like the woman with Israel's blood. Reach out by faith and take a hold of it and receive it. Receive it. Mm. Thank you, Father. There it is. His presence. Folks, all things are possible in his presence. Whatever the need is, right now, receive it. Right now, receive it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And Father, for those that are with us by the internet, the same presence that we are experiencing here, Father, as they experience that presence there, let them release their faith and re reach out and receive that what they are believing for. And Father, I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. And Father, as long as what they believe for not according is not going against your divine will and purpose and plan, Father, it shall not be hindered from them. It shall not be held back from them. As they release their faith, Father, then, Father, let it be released now in Jesus' name. I thank you for it. I praise you. And I glorify you. I give you all the glory and honor for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Well, that's it for today. Amen. That's it for today. God, God has shown himself strong. Amen. 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 
Amen. Amen. Glory to God. There are those that are with us by the internet and you are. It's time for us to prepare our tithes and offerings. You believe in God for something. You believe in God for a great breakthrough. Amen. And I don't care what country you are in, what country you're from. Amen. If you would go to my website. LarryBurkinMinistries.com If you would go to my website and use your ATM card or your credit card and plant a seed and release your faith, it doesn't matter what country you're from, go to my website, plant that seed, and believe God for your breakthrough. Amen. Believe God for your breakthrough. I believe that God will minister to you right at the point of your need and the name of Jesus Christ will be glorified. Amen. Father, I thank you right now for those that are with us by the internet, those that are with us, Father, here in the service. Father, let the word of God be ministered. Let the word of God be translated in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the word of God begin to bring forth the life and the health and the healing to those that are in that place, God, where your name will be glorified. I release my faith right now, Father, for those that are going to be sowing their seed over the internet. I thank you for it right now. Go to my website at labrigadministries.com. Plant your seed there on my website. It's a secured line. Plant your seed. And we're going to come and agree with you for your breakthrough, for your miracle. It doesn't matter what country you're from. You plant a seed today. Amen. Plant a seed today and expect your miracle. And expect your breakthrough. Expect your, your, your change, your turnaround. God wants to do it for you today. Amen. Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Those of you that are going to be sending it through the mail, make your check payable to Ladbroke Ministries or New Life in Christ Jesus. Amen. And, and send it to P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. 95841. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And Father, you say in your word that as we give, it shall be given unto us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give unto our bosom with the same measure that we beat with all, it shall be measured to us again. We, Father, we thank you that your word is alive and health and healing to all our flesh. And as we give, Father, we expect, Father, we expect your word to work on our behalf with signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm going to underline my notes where we're stopping off at today. Amen. And we're going to take back up uh, page three. Amen. Uh, page three. So we're going to stop back. We're going to pick back up in this area right here. We're going to do a little back search on next, next Sunday. But we're going to come right back here where we left off at today. We're going to continue with the thought that we are walking in right now. Because I believe that God is speaking to our hearts. I believe that God is trying to get a message across to us so that we can experience His goodness and His mercies. Amen. Glory to God. Father, I thank you for those who have given. I thank you, Lord God, for your word that has gone forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, let not one word fall to the ground, but help us to understand that you are speaking directly to our human spirit that has been transformed from darkness to light. So that image that you place within us will be seen in the earth. And as we do, Father, your name will be glorified throughout the earth. So, Father, I bless the people that are supporting this ministry, that are given into this ministry, especially during this time and this season. And, Father... I'm asking you, Lord God Almighty, that you would supernaturally pour back into their lives 
so that they will not lack anything that you intend for them to receive. That every need is met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. No matter what the enemy is saying, Lord God, you have given us the victory over all the powers of the enemy. And we hold fast to that. And we thank you for that, Lord. Now, Father, I speak blessing over your people. I thank you, Lord God, for them. And I call that money back into their lives in the name of Jesus. I call bonus, raises, settlements, supernatural increase, houses paid in full, cars paid off, trucks paid off, <coughs> loans, loans forgiven and, for, and forgiven yes. and forgiven in Jesus' name. Oh, Koshe de la Supernatural deliverance from debt. Debt free. Debt free in Jesus' name. I declare it. I decree it now. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Receive that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sow your seed and be blessed. You may be with us today and you say, Pastor, we have a A brother we've been praying for, a sister we've been praying for that needs salvation. Will you please lead us through the prayer of salvation? Yes, I will. Thank you for asking. Amen. You may have never asked Jesus Christ to come in your heart. Maybe you have. But you've been wondering, Lord, is it for me? Well, I'm, quite, I'm here to tell you, yes, that it is for you today. God does want you to experience his salvation. Amen. He wants you to experience the new life that's in Christ Jesus. And he wants you to, to acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And he wants you to open up your heart and invite him into your heart. I'm going to lead you through that prayer right now. Say it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Father, I believe that Jesus is your son and he died for my sin. I accept that. Now, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Amen. That's a simple prayer. But oh, if you said that prayer from your heart, the image that God gave man from the beginning has suddenly become an image that God placed within your heart. And now to understand that image, it's time that you begin to read the word. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. And that's by studying the word of God to show yourself approved for working under God. Need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God wants you to learn who you are now and accept that knowledge and walk in it. Father, we thank you once again for those who said that prayer with us and for those who believe, I believe, Father, those that said that prayer, God, that you have touched their hearts and they are now experiencing the spirit of regeneration of the human spirit. I thank you, Father, for salvation. It has rushed into their hearts through their confession. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I ask you to bring us all to that place that we will acknowledge you in every area of our life. Father, I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. You may be here today and you say, Pastor, I need special prayer. Will you please pray for me? I'm going to pray for you right now. Amen. If you're here today, you want special prayer, I'll pray for you right now. Anyone? Amen. Amen. Good. Then let's pray for them by the internet. Father, we pray for those people that are with us by the internet. We lift them up before your Father. And Lord God, we declare and we decree supernatural manifestation of your miracle working power from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I cancel every spirit of germ, every spirit of cold, every spirit of the flu that will come against them right now, I rebuke it, I loose it from them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I release divine help from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet in the name of Jesus. Drive out those germs. Let them experience the new life 
that's in Christ Jesus in divine health and healing. I give you glory and praise for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, then let's stand. Let's stand up. Father, as we come to this end of the service, we thank you, Lord, that you have joined us throughout this day. And, Father, that you will not leave us nor forsake us. We bless your holy name. And, Father, as we prepare to leave, we ask you, Father, that you will let the angels go before us and walk with us. Let divine protection be ours today to keep us from harm and danger. And, God, we give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us. See you tonight at 6.30. God bless. Bye-bye.